Right, hey guys, I'm Steve. Welcome to the welcome to the cloud images, boff. Um, I'm going to say straight away, this is a boff. This is not a talk. If I'm spending more time talking than you lot, something's gone very, very wrong. Please talk to me. That includes the people watching live on video. Um, we want this to be a discussion session. In fact, the first of many discussion sessions. I'll come to that later. Um, I want to go through, very briefly, I have some slides. The slides are not meant to be driving things, but I'm going to use them as a crutch because I'm rubbish otherwise. Um, what are we doing today? What should we be doing? There are some plans and plots going on. I'll explain in, in a little bit more. Please, please, we have a gobby doc. Please take notes. Put things in there. Try not to swear too much because it does offend some people, but otherwise be open and honest. Um, if, if people can take notes, that will be very helpful. We do want to be following up on this a lot later. So, what are we doing? We have Debian images in many clouds. All of the biggest clouds are using, are running thousands and thousands of Debian images every day, I'm told. Awesome. We want to see lots of Debian. It's good. We have lots of people doing their own thing. There's the major cloud platforms all have their own Debian images. The smaller platforms do the same. Lots and lots of people are running Debian in personal clouds. The one thing that worries me slightly, and again, I'm going to come on to this in a moment, is we have a massive amount of variation. Every image is different, it seems. There is, we're not providing anything official from Debian. Well, actually, we do. We have one official one from Debian at the moment. Um, I want to talk through that a little bit more. Actually, just as a, show, as a show of hands, who here is currently using Debian in the cloud? Whoa. Who's, who's as a, again, another show of hands. Who is running an image from somebody else? Who's running their own image? Well, so, first one. So who's running, an, who's running a standard image provided by somebody? About, ooh, half maybe. Who's, who's making their own images? And about half. Okay, that doesn't surprise me. Um, so we have a reasonable, reasonable audience here to cover this. So what do we think we should be doing? Um, I and a number of other folks think it would be awesome to have official images produced by Debian for a, number, for a whole range of reasons. Um, we could really, really do with better supporting our users at the moment um, people are not running Debian Debian. They're running, um, whether it's a Google Debian image, whether it's a Microsoft Debian image, there might not be very much difference in there. Hopefully there isn't, but we're not actually providing for those people directly in any way. Um, a lot of the images out there could well be Debian, but actually with extra little um, bundles of joy attached. You know, whether it's Trojans, whether or not it's random things that will steal your data, could be tracking you or whatever. We honestly don't know. Um, we'd like to provide good QA to make sure the images that people get are known to work. Again, if the images people are running that claim to be Debian don't work, that doesn't reflect well, well on us. And I have mentioned in very, in very small thing, trademarks. Um, all of this is relevant. We don't want the, the, the Debian name. We don't want the trust that we've built with our users to be diluted by problems here. What we're not going to do, and don't get me wrong, this is a majorly important thing, we are absolutely not going to come down and stop people trying to use their own images. This is free software. We want people to do whatever the hell they want with it. What we want to do is give an extra service here. So what do we think an official image should be? I hope none of this is controversial. But please shout if you think I'm doing things wrong, if I'm talking about things that are not wanted. Um, we, in the images team and the trademarks team, have come up with some basic guidelines. We want official Debian images to be produced by Debian people on Debian machines. Does that sound good? Yes, Mehdi. Can we get a microphone? Maybe you can relay the question. Is that true? Is possible? Um, do I think that's always possible? Um, I think so. Uh, can, you can you do that for Azure? 
Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> the, okay. Great. I didn't make the, I didn't make that talk today. Sure. Um, I'll let Martin and Steve, by all means, expand on that a little bit later. No, um, yes, it's all I needed. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if it's fully possible for uh, Amazon Cloud. You yes. can you can have two types of images. One is on S3. One is on EBS. On EBS, you need to you can only access EBS from other Amazon instances. So so you need to bootstrap one image from other uh, f from already existing instance. Okay. So, so when we are building uh, images for Amazon with Bootstrap visit, we we run uh, Debian mm. instance. We attach uh, we attach volume. We root their instance, up, install, upgrade, blah blah blah. Then detach and then register this from uh, everything from inside this instance. So, so we right. need to somehow Bootstrap this okay. thing. Okay. Um, anybody else on that front point? No. Um, what should the content of an official Debian image be? Um, to be Debian, for me, it's got to be, um, everything's got to come from Debian. It needs to be from main. Um, other people, and I've, heard, I've, I've seen examples of images like this, can add all kinds of extra junk in but still claim it's Debian. Um, for that, that's great for their own use. I don't think we should have those in an official image. Please, nobody argue with that. <laughs> um, what about uh, if specific drivers or so on are n required which come, let's say, from Contrib? That would be the case, for instance, for VirtualBox guest additions or things like that. That's a good question. What do you think? Well... It's pretty. It, it's a pretty tough question. I agree because mm. the thing is that on one hand, I mean, like it has been for quite a while that basically official Debian is main. On the other hand, we don't. I mean, providing people with basically a not working image or not well working image is not nice either. Yeah, it's tough. Um, Neil wants to talk as well. As is often the case. <laughs> okay, I'll stand up. So this was an issue in my term as, as, as DPL about what is Debian and trademarks and how those are linked because uh, quite a bit of this stuff came out from cloud providers wanting to call something Debian. Um, now, I was certainly of the view um, that for something to be official Debian, it must be produced by the project, um, essentially whatever that means. So Debian people on Debian machines, it, it needs to be produced by the project as a whole. And it is very important that official Debian is only Debian main. So nothing on Contrib, nothing from non-free. That, that's one of the key things yeah. that allows us to be a free software distribution. There is then the question of what is based on Debian, well, that's nominative, so anything can be based on Debian. But then there's this wonderful thing in between where you have a cloud provider who adds a kernel module or a patch, mm. or in the case of a cloud provider who wants automatic security updates applied. So if they change a config file, a single line changing no to yes, is that now still Debian? And so of finding a way that we can help to allow crowd providers to call things Debian because many of them actually want to and we should want them to because then we get the recognition of yes it's Debian you can install Debian on thousands of devices rather than in some large vendors cases they're basically running Debian but haven't called it that they've called it something else because they can't but it's basically just the same so that's a open question and I think a lawyer would say, that's a very interesting question. We take payment by Visa and MasterCard <laughs> and, and however else you'd like. But, yeah. but one way around it is, is potentially for mm. Debian CD, Debian Boot Team to start help creating these. So we, at least we can start pushing things towards that. And that's exactly where I'm, where I'm coming to. Yeah. yeah. Um, what we'd like to... Ah, we have a question from IRC. Uh, yeah, the question from IRC um, is, uh, since images are loaded remotely, is it possible to check them after installation? 
Um, that depends entirely on the, on the platform, I believe. Um, some of the platforms have their own tracking of checksums and whatever, so you can validate exactly what you've got. Um, it, it depends. Um, it's one of the things, again, we want, we want to try and make sure of. Um, yeah. And, and the follow-up detail is, uh, therefore, how do I know I'm getting an official Debian installation? That's a very good question. <laughs> so the second part of the contents thing is, um, what do we provide? Um, do we provide a standalone stable image, which is great and we can track, and it just has just those things in? Do we provide something with some back ports included? If so, what? Presumably kernels. I've spoken to guys who would like to see a backport kernel, would see backports of the various cloud platform tools included. And that's all perfectly understandable. We need to be absolutely very clear as to what changes are made in, in images and exactly what is provided. That's, I think, the most important thing we have here. Yes, Sam? So, so I think the, the other really big elephant in the room is, what do you do about configuration? Like, do you provide something like CloudNet or something that, you know, I, an official Debian image that doesn't have something like Cloud in it, in it would be of absolute uselessness to me. Yeah. Um, coming up in a, in a very, very short moment. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. Um, we also have the question of, do we have images with CloudNet included? And I think the clear consensus for official images, clearly we should. I, do people here know what CloudNet is? If anybody doesn't, does anybody not know what CloudNet is? Luca, okay. So CloudNet is a, is a service that runs very early at boot, so it can go and do the appropriate setup for your cloud platform. So it can go and run the platform-specific bits that you want as part of your boot process. That's basically it. I'm going to shut this one out because there's no way anyone's going to get my phone. There was a question earlier about um, is there enough bit, uh, in main to support um, everything we need without having to fall back on possibly not free? So when you have the cloud in it bits for the different cloud platforms, us to go down that route. So, does right? I'm going to do any of the cloud. Do any of the platforms need contrib or non-free bits um, to be run from cloud in it? Um, yes. I'd, apparently, yes, they do. Um, I would hope it's minimal. No. Obviously, we're not going to put those things in in the official images. So I, I gave up on trying to get Debian onto Rackspace because they're is an agent you need that is problematic. Great. I tried that as well. There's an agent specific from Rackspace because they run on Zen API, and Zen API, that's only for their public cloud, though. And Zen API needs an agent in, in the machine. No, it doesn't. They just configure it that way. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so you know more than I do. I tried. I was about to say I tried to package the agent, and it's not easy to do so. Okay, it's not even easy to get a copy of the agent. Um, the, like I mean, you know, they the, they have this magic installer that runs on their images that grabs a copy of the agent and then deletes the package, which um, is good because if you actually take a look at the package, it's so embarrassingly bad that it's kind of good that it's deleted. But um, <laughs> it's um, it is rather unfortunate. OpenStack even on Zen has a mechanism called con config drive that is entirely supported by CloudInit that would work fine. Um, they just don't use it. Great. I think Jimmy has a question, a comment at the back. Yeah. So um, as uh, so. I, I used to be at the at Google working on their Debian images, and um, they don't have anything non-free in the guest. It's entirely uh, the FSG free, but sometimes the development pace moves a little faster than um, than main. Uh, so the, we so there's no need for contrib or non-free for that case, mm -hmm. but it's possible we may want to see to what extent backports and or stable release updates could make sense during the lifetime of a Debian release. Sure. Anna. 
from, from speaking to guys at Google, guys from Microsoft, it's, yeah, they've all got similar issues about that. Say, for example, kernel drivers, which are improving all the time and they want better performance, or new features that are only available in the new kernels. You know, all those things, ooh, a little bit of howl. Um, I'm leaning towards we should definitely have an official image that contains only main, only stable, that people can use. We should also have an official image that includes small bits of backports that are that, that are tightly controlled. Um, I'm tempted to call it. Um, feel free to shout at me if you think you have a better name. Something like, a, say, a, a Jesse Refresh or something, which has those pieces in, which will give people maybe a better experience, but they will need to be aware it's not just running stable. So, in in that sense, right? Um, since we're discussing about what you can call Debian, I mean. I call my laptop running Debian when I have backports, right? And yeah. it's not Debian stable if you want, but I think mm -hmm. it's fair to say Jesse plus backports or whatever you want to call it and just maybe maybe stable at some point will be deprecated and not runnable on some platforms if sure. you don't want to provide even kernels or stuff like that's that's unavoidable. But if someone can install like the Jesse plus backport version or stable plus version, I think they're going to be fine and it's still Debian, right? It's backports are provided by Debian developers. So. Yeah, I think we have broad consensus that that's reasonable. Yeah, so if I understood, uh, if I understand correctly, basically Jesse refresh, for, for instance, would be basically a pure blend with some config telling it to please fetch sus bits from backport. Or yeah, okay, and and would it be then like on a per would it be de different de depending on the cloud provider if it requires special bits to support it? Or um, I'd like to not be producing multiple official images, one per provider, because how yeah. many providers are there? Lots. Um, so again, we're, we're, we're kind of evolving this. I'd, I'd personally like to see maybe two, three, a very, a very small number of possible images we should have a minimal stable only. We should possibly have a stable plus backports, whether we, how, however we call that, which would just be a minimal set of, up, of updates. And we might provide a bigger, richer image, which could have a bunch of other things yet to be defined, hand wave, hand wave. And we'll work out the exact details of that in the weeks and months to come. I so think that, does that Absolutely. sound sensible? I think you need a per cloud image, unfortunately, um, if for no other reason than cloud in it kind of really performs a lot better if you tell it which data sources to enable. Um, there are a couple of data sources that can introduce minutes of boot delay um, if you leave them enabled. And um, it's, I've always found that I needed to at least customize that per cloud provider, if nothing else? Possibly. My take on that would be we should provide a basic core image which, it, which doesn't, it is not customized per platform. And by all means, encourage the platform providers to make that kind of change to their images. They're not going to be official Debian images necessarily at that point, but it's still Debian. We're happy for, the, for them to call it Debian. Does, does, does that sound reasonable? No. I, I think you want it to be possible for them to have official images on the cloud providers. I mean, that's, that's my opinion, at least. OK. I can give a concrete example. If you enable the EC2 type of uh, image of a data source for cloud in it, then it's going to slow down everyone else by one minute thirty. So that's that's problematic. It's not EC2. It's the it's another data source that looks a lot like EC2. But yeah, I know what you're talking about. Okay. Um. Is this something we can solve by having the Debian installer be precedable to disable enable some of these? Oh, we're, we're not using the installer at this point. That, I think that, you know that's that's half the point. 
Well, these are going to be complete images that you boot directly. Um, okay, so thank you for the information. That, that, that helps. Um, we've had other people asking should image it or how should we handle security updates? So what we should be doing, and I appreciate I'm, I'm being quite remiss so far with this, with the OpenStack images, we should be regenerating images as, at the moment we get security updates to anything in, in, that's included in them. Um, that's something that we can and will do. It's just a case of doing the work. We'll get to that. Um, what do you, we do about security in images that are currently running? So a number of people, um, I'm told, on the platform, um, on, the, on the cloud platforms themselves, would like unattended upgrades in, in, installed um, by default on the images so that they don't have to worry about um, running potentially you know, insecure software. However, there's tension here again, of course. A lot of their users don't want, make, you know, if they have a long running instance, don't want their database server to, to be restarted potentially without warning. This is a hard question, you know, a hard thing to decide. So, Mehdi. Isn't that a wider question? Because uh, we will uh, have the same need on workstations, on servers, so it's not specific to cloud images? Sure, absolutely. Um, that is a very much a wider question. It's something that we might want to be thinking about in this specific area. Right, you know, right here, right now, because of the problems we're trying to solve. Sam. So, regenerating the image doesn't work that great either. Um, so, at least on a lot of cloud cloud, cloud platforms, I mean, OpenStack to some extent, uh, EC2 to a very great extent. Um, I'm going to hard code image IDs in script and deploy scripts and stuff. And I probably really want the image to do a full upgrade on first boot, if nothing else. Right. So again, and this comes down to, you want that. I'm told some people don't. Um, how, do we, um, how do we add that add support for both sets of users? I mean, that you can do with cloud init config. Yeah. It's, it's a question about what the default is. Sure. Right. Um, so, what, so when I was at Google, we had a similar discussion mm -hmm. about unattended upgrades, and uh, I believe that for the official images, we deferred to Debian's preferences in this regard, or what Google considered official, I should say. But um, some other clouds, I think the answer depend, the eventual answer depended on which distro and what all the factors were there. But I think the default. So you write it, Mehdi, that it is a broader question across more than just a cloud context. I also think the answer might even depend on which context. If you're on a f physical server in Africa with you know, unreliable and slow internet, you don't want unattended upgrades. If you're even in a physical data center, not just clouds, with flaky services that can't be restarted in a good order, you do want uh, to not restart things automatically, but maybe you could do that with policyrc.d, for example. Uh, this is really a discussion that could be broad throughout Debian in time for a stretch or buster. But uh, I, I, as Steve points out, it's the, this question and the question of update on first boot are prompted by cloud, and they'll apply in more context. So we need to make it a broader conversation. If I'm not mistaken, an attended upgrade just upgrades at a fixed time in the week, mm. right? So what happens if you have 1,000 VMs deployed in your cloud, and they all try to update at the same time? So before installing it, we might want to address that problem first. Yeah. Oh, apologies if it sounds like I'm asking more questions than giving answers here. That's kind of what I expected. Um, we have a lot of discussions to go through yet. Um, I'm talking about giving different variants of images. Um, that seems to be a, a reasonably agreed point. Um, one of the things that we really want to do with our official, with our official images, which is something that again ha we haven't had much of yet, is good QA. Um, we want to get automation in place so that when we produce an image, we know it's good. At the moment, some of the images we produce, we we, we might know it boots. That's about as far as it goes. Um, Debian is normally known for being good, stable, solid, and and well tested. 
that there's a really big potential hole here that we need to, we need to fix. So um, we started to making plans. So I mailed the cloud list quite a while ago after prompting from Martin, suggesting a timeline on, on how we should go about this. Um, we haven't really followed that timeline. It were, we, we were suggesting that we, we would try and get some official images building on our central image building box um, this week. Um, none of that's happened yet. Um, we were talking about agreeing the test requirements for maybe September. We've not had any discussion yet. Please, let's get discussing. We want to get some real images going through that testing by October, November. Well, we're not even remotely in a state to start that yet. Let's get going. Um, I have been swapping quite a lot of email with uh, Zach Murano at Google, who you know, Jimmy tells me you know is a what replacement colleague something. Yeah, um, about a lot of these issues, and that's what's prompted some of the dis some of what I'm talking about here. He's, he's not the only one. Don't worry. We, you know, we want to make this work for everybody. However, what what he has suggested is that Google would love to host a sprint um, in Seattle, which seems to make most sense as a location for a cloud sprint, as Google, Microsoft, and Amazon, the three biggest cloud providers are all based in Seattle, um, and they're more than happy to host. Um, so I'm going to be proposing that we, well, I'm going to be helping him to try and organize something. Dates to be decided sometime later this year. Um, please, if you'd like to, to go to such a thing, we're going to be discussing it on the cloud list. It's not just going to be for the three big cloud providers. We want everybody with an interest here to turn up. Um, and we want to get people working together to make things better here. So whether that, whether that is for your own personal cloud stuff, whether that's for the, the big service that's running millions of images a day, we want everybody's input to make official Demian images work well and to make, oh, sorry, and to make even what we things we don't class call official, we want to make those images work, oh, work well too. Um, please, let's get going on that. So, do we have any more comments? Like I said, we've gone through the slides. Like I said, I'm not trying to drive all this totally. This is for conversation from you guys. Bill? Mike? I was wondering if, if you wanted to do anything about the non-official images if, you know, if you're mm. going to use the word Debian, do you need to document what's what's not standard? What's you know um, mm. any changes that sort of thing? Or you know, I, I presume trademark policy already sure. covers some of this, but do we want to be a little bit more formal about it? For that, we probably need to set a standard, which was the idea of ha having this buff mm. and coming out maybe with, with some sort of standard how an official Debian image might look like and then we may talk about what's official and what's unofficial. But yeah, absolutely we want to go that way. Um, for the protection of users and the protection of Debian, we want to make sure um, as a minimum people should be documenting what they're doing. Um, the best people are already doing that, the dodgy people clearly aren't going to be. In that regard, would it make sense, for instance, to recommend that, uh, I'm going to pick a random example, but recommend that cloud provider builds a, a image using, let's say, Bootstrap Visit and makes the manifests available, so then people can actually say, okay, this is actually a Debian blend, and this is what they have done in terms of package install and configuration. That's exactly the and kind of thing we should It's do. actually executable yeah. documentation. Yeah. The next thing that, well, part of the discussion that we've been having over the last couple of years as well is about the exact tooling to make images. I don't necessarily want to have that argument again today. Yeah, that's why I <laughs> said it's uh, yeah. just an example. Sure, but definitely, definitely, we should be getting that level of detail from people to know what tool they used, exactly how they built. This, 
None of this should be hard for people. You know, if you're going to be doing a good job of providing cloud images, they need to be re reproducible. They need to be verifiable. We need to know what, what's happened. <coughs> and that will solve a lot of the issues. Uh, I think we should make sure that the official images are built all from a single source tree so that when you have a modified image, you can point people to your modified Git tree with all the patches you apply on top of the official ones instead of having stuff uh, spread around random places be to build images. Uh, possibly, yes. Again, it gets difficult if people are using different tools. Um, and it, it, we do have a lot of flexibility in this area. Whether you think that's a good thing or a bad thing, well, that is potentially a religious war. <laughs> Any more comments? Yes, Sam, one sec. So I, you know, I, I said this on the list, but I still believe it. The, this is an area where the plethora of tools is not serving at least me as a user and, and other users I've talked to well. I think this is an area where this is probably the wrong forum but having a little bit of burning at the stake of one of the tools might actually serve the community. And I say that as someone, as an outsider who's not been involved in any of these, right? And I, because I, I'm saying as a user, this is actually kind of a bit of a problem. Sure. So Riku hosted a, a session at DevConf last year enumerating the different image generating tools we have in Debian. He got into double figures. Um, yeah, it's bad. It's, it is really bad. Um, so everyone has started off scratching their own itch. And of course, we all understand that. That's part of what we do in Debian. But over time, we should come up with better answers. And tools that can, that can work and do what everybody needs is a good plan. I'm not going to argue with that in the slightest. <laughs> 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 yes, there is an XKCD cartoon about this, we know. Um, I mean, we could get to the stage where we're not going to recognize things as official unless they're using the tool that we bless. Um, again, I don't want to have the, have the fight right here, right now as to which tool we bless. That's actually something that I think would be well served doing it at a sprint, where people can actually demonstrate their tools and say, Here's why my tool is better than yours. Oh, actually, your tool does exactly what mine does, but in a slightly different way. Maybe I could just change its config and it would do, it would do what I need. That's the kind of thing I'd like to get to, but it's not going to happen in, in this room right today. What, what, I like, what I would like to see either here or in the next weeks is that we come up with some sort of minimal policy how an image should look like. Um, that we are, that we can f at least for a stretch, then use that policy to say these uh, images uh, meeting this policy, we are going to be calling st uh, 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 official stretch images. Sure, and that that was part of the the last thing I want I wanted to get to today was we've started discussing things around that policy, we haven't set it in stone yet. Um, yeah. Most of what I've suggested today, I think, is reasonable. I've not heard mu many arguments. There are tweaks. Another topic which I would like we have a discussion with about is about the con package list that we put in that image. Yeah. Uh, for example, I've put a GNU screen, uh, just I think because it's convenient. Some others may argue that Tmux is better or something like that. So uh, I'm not strongly opinionated about it, and uh, the more input we have, the, be the better it is. Sure. I, that's the kind of place I, I, I wish we had some discussion like that on the cloud list, but I've not really seen any, even those being discussed much, let alone agreed. I recently, I don't know who, who follows uh, Debian cloud list, I recently, recently had an argument with uh, um, Vagrant, uh, the, the guys doing the Vagrant images about the amount of uh, additional software they are having in their images. I would actually like to see official 
the, uh, the minimal official images just doing the minimal installation like um, the base installation we do based on the Debian uh, installer? Sure. So right now the Vagrant images, they include only uh, the base system. So it's, uh, it's essential plus standard. And the VirtualBox variant has needs <coughs> the crap that you need to run properly on VirtualBox, but the libvirt and the LXC ones don't. We had like half of the KDE and uh, GNOME libraries uh, in the um, Vagrant images because of uh, some library dependencies. Is, are they being pulled in with recommends? Yeah, no, that's a bug in uh, PineEntry, which depends on PineEntry GTK or PineEntry Curses. So yeah, we work around with that. Okay, that's fixed. So, right. Any more comments? <laughs> so uh, yes, I agree. It should be uh, as minimum as possible. But though it's uh, the role of a distribution to choose some tools, still somehow, it's like when you install GNOME, then you have I don't know a gedit installed together. Is there some small tools that we consider uh, uh, good enough and small enough to fit in an image? Like, I don't know, a Vim rather than just VI or... Let's not start I'm gonna, talking I'm talk. uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would actually argue against that. In the cloud, you want your images to be absolutely tiny. You don't want mm. anything installed by default. And everyone uses tools, whether it's Ansible or Puppet or Shelf, to install whatever they need. So the, the, the stock image should yeah. be tiny. OK, but like, uh, would you consider 1% increase in the size of the image? Uh, important or like even the last person you don't yeah. want a text editor you don't want a new screen or nothing okay some other people have other ideas so the argument against that is a lot of people running docker or running images and looking at things like alpine linux it's much smaller than even the smallest debian install size absolutely matters here yeah my addition was just it's a matter of policy so the position is uh, quite clear and uh, doesn't gives, uh, give a uh, feeling for more people to add more tools to the stock image. At some point, we have to decide what's mm. in the image. And, I mean, not on the, based on some tools, specific tools, etc. <laughs> Just to give you an idea of figures, like the current image, the minimum you could have is like 400 megs at least. OK, so does one meg makes a difference? <laughs> so, uh, I, I think that if people want to have non-minimal images, they can totally do that, either by having building tools that, that support stacking of images, or you just build your own image, which includes your favorite editor and screen or Tmax and whatever random other mm -hmm. things you want. But the kind of base minimal image should just be exactly that. It shouldn't include all the nifty tools. Because I know that if I were to do that, I mean, my selection of nifty tools would be different to your selection. And then sure. suddenly, your image is at 3.5 gigs. Mm. Yeah, it's a lot of this is personal choice. And actually, you pay per megabyte <coughs> or gigabyte uh, for the image you use. Mm. So I, I don't think the image, I think the image size is a bit of a red herring to some extent. Um, what I think is more important and is an easier policy to, to use to decide this is looking at the security footprint and looking at what's there. I, I want something to be minimal, not necessarily because I'm hugely concerned about the per gigabyte cost, although that can become an issue with enough instances, but much sooner the overall system complexity becomes an image. And I don't want parts running around that I don't need. Um, I will say that there's a, I want to you know, make sure people are aware of the flip side is that this does mean that someone's, um, that you are probably going to see people who, who have a lot of this, the same type of an instance, um, you know, cloning images and, and stacking some stuff on them and, and basically saving that as its own image. Um, but all the cloud providers make it pretty easy to, to do that because it's a common task. Yeah.
Martin again. <coughs> Just a stupid question. DSA is running their, uh, their own um, images, cloud images as well on the Garnetti installation. So are we going to tell uh, to call them also official Dem uh, Debian images based on the um, installation <coughs> procedure, how we currently build those images? That's up to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> So we need to register them with the <laughs> cloud team as well. Maybe. <laughs> so I think we've got some consensus. Um, what I'm going to do, because we're getting right to the end of the, of the time we've got now. Oh, no, I'm being, now I'm being corrected by the video team. Um, I am going to say anyway, I will do my usual thing that I do with any sessions I run. I will be writing up a summary of what, of what was said here, um, and it will go to the cloud list and whatever. Please pick holes in what's in there. I am fallible, but I'm hoping to try and provide a good summary so everybody is aware it, whether they were here or not. Um, the next steps are we sh will, should try and organize the sprint that I've mentioned. Um, I'm hoping the DPL will approve um, a nice big sprint so we get lots of good stuff. I'm getting nodding good. Um, and we will try and thrash out um, the rules for what we consider to be official images in the coming weeks. Obviously, as we're getting t towards the freeze, we can't let that go on too long. And for the people who are producing images, this is really, really important. They want to have clear rules that they can follow. Um, so please join in on the cloud list and let's, uh, let, let's get that sorted out. Do we have any more comments or questions from, out from outside the room? Um, uh, yes, there is. Uh, the comment is, uh, the minimal De Debian image should be about what is required to run out to get. And I suspect the implication is discuss. <laughs> Um, that works for me. SSH. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, we want to let people get in as well? <laughs> yeah. You don't actually need SSH. I mean, I, you probably want it, but you don't need it. True. I think most people would agree it's about the one extra package you do want installed <laughs> on your image by default. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. I would actually say, as long as you have a way on whatever platform you're using, you don't want SSH installed by default. Because whoever actually wants it can use it and install it. Everybody who don't, doesn't want it has a hard time removing it if it's in the default image. No. <coughs> it's easy to remove. Uh, that said, very few of the cloud providers unlike, say, some of the virtual private server providers, but in the public cloud providers, very few of them have a good interactive uh, console way of getting in, especially in an automated fashion, so uh, unless you customize the image first, of course. Yeah. Uh, to reply to, I already forgot who said that it's actually pretty hard to remove SSH. Well, you basically can put some configuration in cloud in it uh, to uninstall it on the very first boot. Okay, it will have started for a very short time. What if you do it in the, the very first phase? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I think that if you do it in the, there are two phases of cloud in it, and I think the first phase will run before SSH starts. Um, and you can, I believe you can run a command in that phase that would remove it. Um, am I wrong? I heard a no, but um, uh, I think it is possible to remove it before it starts. Actually, and we actually like network access in, inside the image, probably some sort of. <coughs> right. Uh, so it might depend on whether we go with a single image versus a cloud based. Uh, per cloud, that might be the first thing to decide. Yeah. Is there, you know, I think there should be a way to uh, 
leave it open so if there's a good business case that we can add a package if it really does help the user for that particular cloud. And I'm speaking as a guy who usually gets the uh, on-call things and stay up all night trying to solve problems and images. So, uh, you know, it usually comes to us and, you know, some SEV2 because they did something stupid that we didn't expect and we could make all these SEV2s go away forever if we just had that one last thing or did that one little tweak that it would be benefit everybody. Yeah, we're not locking things down today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just to say on the topic of the content of the image, uh, do we have the consensus that what is put in by the Debian installer by default should also be the default in the image? For example, I've switched from Syslinux, no, no, wait. For example, I switched from Syslinux to Grub because a lot of people told me this is Grub that everybody uses and that it is installed by default. And is that, is that, Re relevant? Is that the reason why you should use Grub and not Sys Linux? I think the reason is that Grub works out of the box on most platforms, and Sys Linux somebody sometimes it doesn't. Um, over at the back. <coughs> The main reason to switch to Grub is because uh, the integration with Syslinux is incomplete. When you install a new kernel, it doesn't register itself. Uh, no. no. No, I don't know, okay. okay. But the, the original bug report said uh, that it's because... Uh, Yeah, uh, another argument to pick tools that are basically what Debian installer install is also that if you call your image Debian, you might want not to surprise users too much, I guess. And I mean, if we are talking about things that are not installed or uh, not installing things, let's say saying, okay, we don't want to have packages that have priority standards, or not all of them, that might be one thing. But saying, okay, we want a different uh, bootloader is kind of complete, uh, in my opinion, kind of problematic because then we are telling all Debian users, oh, actually, if you use Debian on the cloud, then you have to learn that we do it differently there. And <coughs> it's not very nice. At the risk of going into potential. Okay, then, then in, in such case, you want Nano Editor to be installed by default in the cloud image? Because that's, you would surprise the user because Nano is there by default, normally. This is a, a something that can go on and on. I mean, I said potential flame. Would we, yeah. would we agree with something being called official if it was using SysV in it instead of systemd? Yes. <laughs> 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 So, yeah, okay, so I think that we should have two, I think that the policy for what it takes to be official, uh, or for what it takes for something to be called official, can be different from what we choose to produce. And I think that there really is very little that should be in the, uh, what, whether it can be called official beyond what you had on your slides that, you know, produced on Debian machines by Debian people um, from Debian main. Um, I, I'm not sure, and I think those are the primary things for whether it's official. And I'd say that we want to call as much official that meets those requirements as we can. The second, the, um, the question of which images we choose to produce, I think is a lot more narrow. Agreed. Okay. I think we should try to make a good tool that that the users can easily create their own image with all the package they want to have or do not want to have in it. And I think it's not that important to discuss what are the official images. I think for me, an official cloud image would be if I just want to give it a try for the first time to make a cloud installation or to start a Debian thing in the cloud, but if I want to de deploy Debian on like hundreds or thousands of machines, I would expect that there's a senior admin that knows what he wants to have in his, his image, and then uh, we need a very good tool to create this image. 
there's, there's a good call both ways. I think we're just running out of time, so I'll respond to that. That absolutely there need to be good tools, and I believe a lot of the platform folks already have tools, so do we. Um, the argument for the official images is that those are a very good base for the people who frankly don't care, who don't know that much. They just want to take an image that they know will work and will have a guaranteed, stable, reliable set of, you know, setup. That's what the official images are for. And obviously you as a, as a DD, you know so much about the system, you know, you absolutely will want to tell your images. We fully expect that. It's quite uh, startling though to see the percentage of people who won't. They just want a bog standard image that will work. And it's those people who we really want to try and support with the official images. It's a trusted place from where to start. Exactly. It's a trusted place that where people can start. With that, yeah, we're out of time. Thank you, everybody, for turning up. And I will thank you in advance. I'm presuming, please turn up on the cloud list as we discuss this further. This is just another start to try and get this properly worked out. As I said, I'll be sending out a summary. Um, Please keep involved in the conversation. That's the important thing. Thank you for coming. Thank you.